Now, on my bench in front of me, I've got some of my English-made Irvine engines, and more specifically, the Irvine 40 engines. Now, I've seen quite a, stuff, uh, quite a bit of stuff online where there's confusion about what people have got, whether it's a Mark I, a Mark IV, a Mark III. And so, what I thought I would do is a quick video just looking at the Irvine 40 engine. Part of that confusion comes about because the Mark II Irvine 40 had quite a big variation. There was quite a big development from the start through to the finish. So, as I think I just said, there were four different marks of Irvine 40 engine. And there were a few specialist ones as well, which I'll, I'll mention. But I'll zoom the camera in and we'll have a look and we'll go through them. Right, well, here we have some of the engines. And if we take a look at this first, this is the Mark I Irvine 40 engine which came out in 1976. And there are a few things that make this very distinctive from the later engines. First, it's uh, all aluminium, it's not treated like the later red ones. It's got the aluminium back plate. We have a small front housing here to accommodate a fairly small bearing as opposed to the Mark II where you can see there they had a larger bearing fitted. It's also, this model anyway, or this, this one I've got, has got an aluminium uh, carburetor and we can see there it's got Irvine stamped on it. I believe the very first Irvine Mark I 40s had a pericarb and some of the latter ones also had the plastic resin carbs. But that's essentially, oh and the prop driver here you can see is very different to on the, uh, on the Mark II. So that's quite easily distinguishable. I mean these are they're old engines, 1970s, but they are great engines and they run really well. Now this one has a Dykes piston ring and if we look at the exhaust, the muffler, it's got the Irvine name on it, but it hasn't got made in England on the underside here, which the later Mark II's had. So that's quite an interesting feature. And the I don't know whether this is with all, all of the mufflers, but the Irvine isn't quite as embossed as it is on a lot of the later mufflers, exhausts. So that's your Irvine Mark I. Now if we look, oh, and it's also got this bump, which is a, a boost port on the side. Now if we look at the, the Mark II, there was quite a variation in the Mark II engines. I mean, the, the muffler, was more or less the same as the Mark I as I've just said, so I'll put that on one side. Now the very first Irvine 40 Mark II had the resin carb with Irvine on the front and we've got the bigger bearing housing, we've got the bump for the boost port on the side and the resin back plate, reinforced resin back plate. But then, and this was introduced in 1980, the, the first Mark ones. But after they produced this, they did away with the boost port and it changed the porting so you actually got a channel down the side. Now they did these Mark IIs in both ringed and ABC engines. Now that is really the, the main difference is just this, the porting on this engine, making it more efficient. You can see, looks very similar, the back view, but it's just that bump port is gone and we're given a channel. Now, slightly later on, towards the end of the, the Mark IIs, we had this one produced. We've got the alloy CNC carburetor. These came out in 1989, I believe. And the other difference is it still has this channel boost port, very similar to that, but a slightly different shape. But what's really noticeable is the inlet ports. Just move that to the side. If we look at the back of these two engines, we can see that this inlet port here is angled and widened at the bottom to give a better flow 
and it's narrowed at the top. Now, uh, sorry, that one's narrowed at the top. So they've obviously improved the porting there, and maybe because that's narrower, it's got a, a more of a constriction, and it speeds up the gas flow into the cylinder. I, I, I'm not sure, but they obviously thought that was something that would, would benefit. So we've got these three different variations in the Mark II. And there may well be other variations as well. And with this later one, with the aluminium carb, you can see they put a, a ring around the head there. So it's kind of noticeable from that. Whereas the earlier ones didn't have that, that ring around the head. They also did the Irvine 40 with a two-piece head. I think as they were starting to have issues with the casting and the age of the moulds, they started machining some of the parts. So you've got this two-piece Irvine 40 head that just goes together and it's got that groove that makes it look like one of the very later engines. Now the, the 40 in the Mark II, they also did as a rear entry or rear, rear exit and they also did a Q40 which was essentially the, uh, the same as this later engine here with the alloy carb but it was distinguishable or noticeable it had the red anodized head and it had a slightly different bore and stroke it had a longer stroke and a shorter bore and the whole point of it the Q was quiet to keep it quiet and I don't have a Q40 engine, but I do have the silencer, which is very different from the, uh, the existing 40, Irvine 40 Mark II and Mark I silencer. They also did an SP, which I think is for speed, and that was essentially looked very similar to the Q40, but it had a longer exhaust, and it was a, I, I believe it was a high speed version. Now, in the late 1990s, they produced the Mark III, which was the first of the red engines. And these are very different. I mean, it's a similar carb, the uh, aluminium carb, jet stream carb, um, but it's got the aluminium backplate and it's a totally redesigned crankcase. All of the engines up to this date, uh, up to this point, had two piece crankcases. You could see the front housing bolted on. But then they went for a more modern one-piece crankcase and these were produced in the UK you can see Irvine 40 there I believe these were only produced in a ABC so I don't think they produced ringed versions but I'm not totally sure about that and they went for a more modern design on the exhaust with the uh, with the tail pipe going off to the side as opposed to uh, to the straight through pipes. Now in the early 90s uh, they produced I think no, sorry in the late 90s early 2000s they produced the Mark IV Irvine which was very similar to the Mark III but it was produced in collaboration with OS and uh, done in, um, in Japan it wasn't an OS takeover, it was a collaboration, I understand it, with, um, with Irvine. And the difference, the main noticeable difference, is the black carb has gone. It's an aluminium OS designed carb and it has Irvine written on the front there. So these are great running engines, but I do prefer the older aluminium engines uh, without the red coating but with the aluminium carbs. These are one of my favourite favourite engines. Now, one of the big mistakes that people often make, and I've seen this at, at airfields and online on social media, people often mistake this engine here, this lovely thing, for an Irvine 40. I see them advertised all the time. And this is actually the Irvine 46, which is a bigger version, let me just move these out of the way, a bigger version of the Irvine 40, the original Irvine 40, bored out with a few additional changes. It's got that later angle porting that you see on the back, 
so this is coming up to a narrower import there the exhaust tail pipe has changed this was down to this was machined because of problems with castings and the big noticeable difference that gives it away is the 40 has been milled out or, or machined out to just a, 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 a circle so there's no actual size designation on this engine at all but obviously it's a bigger cylinder bigger piston and it has been machined out to 46 and they do this in both a ring and an aluminium uh, sorry a ring and an ABC engine and these are fantastic engines real workhorses and just one final thing which I realized I forgot to mention in that overview was that the the mark 1 had quite a narrow crankshaft coming out of the prop driver and when they introduced the Mark II they actually had a removable prop stud that you could take out and if we do that there look prop stud comes out and you're left with quite a thick end to the crankshaft sticking out of the um, uh, prop driver and that was the same in both those first two adaptations, variations within the Mark II. But in the later one with the aluminium carb, they did away with that removable prop stud. And you can see it's a lot narrower here. And, um, and I guess a lot more susceptible to bending in an accident. Well, I hope this short video has helped you understand more the changes that have occurred in the Irvine 40 engine. This video isn't meant to be definitive, there are things that I haven't mentioned, small things, but I've just tried to give an overview. So if you've got an Irvine engine and you're trying to work out what kind of age it is, whether it's a Mark 1 or a Mark 2, that will help. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.